You know, extrasensory perception is something that I have heard of over the 14 years of, of my time being a psychotherapist and working in the field of mental health. I am also a grandchild of a pastor and someone who is very spiritual. And my mother also is very spiritual. And so extrasensory perception is something that I have always been a part of, I've always known about, I've always heard about. But when it comes to integrating extrasensory perception with childhood trauma or emotional distress, then the playing field changes. There's a lot of research that is lacking to help us understand what the relationship is between childhood trauma, emotional distress, and extrasensory perception. You may even get someone possibly saying that you are mentally and emotionally unstable. But I wouldn't let that deter you from not believing in extrasensory perception because in today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why this is important to us in understanding and why things are not always as we see them. But before we jump in, let me briefly introduce myself. In case you are new, my name is Tamara and I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm also licensed in mental health. I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma. Let's jump in. So I did a poll on my channel. Here it is right here for you guys. Uh, and I asked, what would you like to hear about? And you guys chose the relationship between extrasensory perception and childhood trauma, or we could say emotional distress. Now, I think this is an interesting topic uh, to begin with, just because it's about extrasensory perception. But I also think it's interesting because not a lot of psychotherapists actually embrace this area of psychology. This area of psychology is known as parapsychology, or we could say the study of paranormal activity. And here's the definition of that right over here, just so that you're clear on it. There's a lot of research, however, not necessarily uh, focused on extra sensory perception, but mainly on projective tests and kind of our cognitive style in interpreting information. Now, Rorschach was a man who created what's known as the Rorschach ink block test in 1921. And, you know, he liked a field known as Klexography. I had to say that so many times like by myself guys not on camera here it is right here in case you want to see it a field known as cleck clexography it was really hard for me to pronounce but this particular study is the creation of ink blocks and he really liked that subject so much that he created the projective test which is typically used in a psychoanalytic way by a, a psychotherapist who believes in psychoanalytic theory to kind of understand the cognitive and emotional styles of an individual. It really does give you, or it can give you some insight into what's really going on with you and, and kind of what you're dealing with and, and what you're thinking about, you know? I, d I did a, a little bit of a, a poll in my community section before this video, and I asked you to look at three different figures and tell me what you saw. And a lot of you right here on the screen made some pretty interesting comments. And I will say every last one of you kind of had something there because I saw exactly what you were seeing. Somebody asked me this question right here on the screen. And you know, honestly, I don't have an answer for that and neither do many psychotherapists because there really never is one answer if you really think about it. Ink block tests really are looking for you to project uh, your personal and psychological meaning onto that image. And so you may see various things and you could also go to sleep and wake up and see something totally different from what you chose the night or the day before. So it's a little bit confusing um, and it really is more of an individualistic and personal endeavor you know, to just, you know, project your personal meaning and interpretations onto that art and then come up with a, an answer, you know? Um, so I, I want to talk about, you know, what is this ink block testing about and, and what's its, what's its goal? Well, its goal is to kind of get inside of your mind, get inside of your, your, your thinking patterns, your cognitive style, and really understand what's going on in your heart, what's going on in the psychology of you as a person, and sometimes what's going on in your brain in and of itself. There's a lot of research studies that suggest that people with extrasensory, uh, 
uh, uh, perception have more right-brained activity than people who don't have extra sensory perception. There's also some really good research, which we need more on the connection between extra sensory perception and traumatic stress. So we're lacking a lot of research, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to highlight some things that you may notice in yourself if you feel that this may actually be you. There's a lot of people who believe that extra sensory perception does not exist and that the individual is probably psychotic or experiencing some kind of psychosis, um, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder to be more specific. But the reality is that there are some very spiritual and insightful individuals that really do see things beyond the natural and we shouldn't label them as, label them, I should say, as mentally ill. We have to be very, very careful with that. Now, just for the purposes of being clinical, I will say in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, here's a picture of it right here in case you've never seen it. That's like this big book that we use to diagnose and kind of help give us some kind of shared knowledge of things. Let me just say that in the back of, of the DSM, if you go through the index, you're probably going to find a diagnosis known as, and this is, this is in the ICD-10, which is another manual that we use, not specifically in the DSM. You're going to see something that 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 is listed as such right here on the screen it is symptom signs and um, I'm trying to think of the other one abnormal clinical and laboratory findings NOS so not otherwise specified and basically what that means is that you're probably experiencing something spiritual and quote-unquote abnormal but we don't have the label for that and so we're just gonna give you this label right now in hopes that you'll accept that because we can't figure out where to put you clinically no we can't diagnose you with schizophrenia we can't diagnose you with bipolar disorder so we're probably going to list you right up under this 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 label here just so that we can understand uh, what we're talking about when you meet with me for example if I'm a, a psychotherapist seeing you. So it can get pretty complicated. Let's jump into what you're likely to see in yourself if you have extrasensory perception. One of the things that you are likely to see in yourself is a difference in cognitive styles. Now, the way that you perceive reality and the way that you think about reality, as well as interpret your situations, can really say a lot about you. Sometimes when you go to a therapist who's aware of extrasensory perception and who's aware of... Um, um, kind of the, the the intricacies of the mind and the spiritual realm, you're probably going to have someone like that um, try to get you to delve into why you think as you why do you think the way that you think, right? Uh, what is your meaning and purpose purpose in life? What drives you, right? Uh, what what kind of targets your emotional side, right? What makes you cry? What makes you you know um, uh, emotionally and psychologically needy, right? And so depending on what kind of cognitive style that you you have will depend on whether or not you're going to experience extra sensory perception there's a lot of people who have traumatic stress and they see the world in such a different way they may also have emotional distress and the experience of losing a loved one and when all of that combined occurs it's really easy to have a spiritual grounding or some kind of spiritual connection i'm sure you've heard of the situations where someone has lost a loved one and and all of a sudden they are having spiritual dreams or they are seeing spiritual things in everyday life it doesn't mean that they are are losing themselves psychologically it just could mean that they are ripe and predisposed so to speak for the spiritual phenomenon the next thing is differences in how the brain functions as i said earlier people with extrasensory perception have more activity in the right hemisphere and they do have activity in the left hemisphere but it's more so in the right and the right side of the hemisphere has a lot to do with artistic abilities um, musical interest more artistic in terms of how you see the world how you engage in the world and that also tends to be the more emotional side of the brain. Most individuals who have a predominant amount of activity in the right hemisphere probably is a little bit more spiritual than you would think. There are some research studies that have also uh, uh, kind of interviewed or researched individuals who are better educated. And some of these research studies, which I'll try to put in the description box for you below, really does highlight the importance of education. And having a higher education was associated with believing in extrasensory perception. It's pretty interesting. 
Uh, the next thing is analytical and intuitive style of thinking. You may be the kind of individual very much like I am who is less research oriented and more spiritual, intuitive, emotional, and analytic. And research has shown that people who are more analytic and intuitive uh, tend to experience extrasensory perception more than other people. Dissociation and emotional distress can also predispose you to extrasensory perception. In the experience of dissociation, you are pulling away from those things that are kind of threatening to you. I talk about that right up here in this video if you want to go check that out. But you know, having extrasensory perception as well as dissociation is something that really can go hand in hand. And dissociation, again, you're pulling away from reality. So you almost already have that ability to experience a different world, a different mindset, a different emotional experience. And so that in and of itself can predispose you uh, to extrasensory perception. The next thing is religiosity and spirituality being open to that already is a predisposition right it predisposes you to having extrasensory perception because uh, you know you're already ripe and you're already open to those p potential experiences because of your religiosity and because of your spirituality there is also uh, some research that highlights displacement right it's kind of taking your internal emotional experiences and displacing them onto other things um, emotional trauma as well as an increase in emotional distress can all ripen you or make you more uh, readily available to extrasensory perception or spiritual experiences. There's something about how the brain uh, kind of functions that makes you a little bit more ripe and I will definitely come back to this topic in the next few videos and explain some of that a little bit more. Let me just say there is a biological predisposition in most of the individuals who have extrasensory perception there could be some kind of family or generational lineage that kind of uh, what am I trying to say here that kind of predisposes you uh, within your family lineage to spiritual things and extrasensory perception some families are just more ripe and more aware and more open to those spiritual experiences than others and also uh, I'm not going to call it an extrasensory perception gene but it's almost like a a part of the brain that may be present within family members for many generations that makes you more available emotionally and psychologically to extrasensory perception. I will definitely be coming back to this topic in the next few videos. Stay tuned uh, for those videos. Thank you so much for being with me today. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around with me, including that bell button so you can get notifications. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.